in this tutorial we'll take a look at the setup of this particular uh, simple animation. Let me see if what it's doing here. So it uh, splits this the slices out of a sphere like that. It's a pretty easy setup. In addition to showing you how I created the animation, it won't take long at all. I'll show you the value of making sure that uh, you use certain type of objects when modeling so you can grab these kind of loops because this this is a basically a loop of faces all the way around and there's these ways to select that but in a sphere sometimes you can't select it right at the top because all the points kind of like on the globe they all converge to a single point like that so uh, we'll, we'll look at two things within this scene so the first one is we'll look at this object and sh I'll show you how it was done besides the lighting and all that we'll just look at the model so essentially well let's just do it like this let's where is this thing in the scene? We'll just make our own right over here. We'll add a new one to the scene. Because it really doesn't take any time whatsoever. So there it is, except it does need a color. I mean, it just it just has to have a color. All right, so there's that right there. OK, so and then when I go, in, go into edit mode, we have, I'm in, uh, well, I'm in vertex select mode, I want to go into face select mode like that. You see all the squares show up on there, so if I right click I get the individual faces, but the power of working within the editing mode is if you press down the alt key and then right click this, you get all the, you get this loop associated with those in that direction. In fact, if I right click a little bit differently within the same thing, notice how I right click there and I right click there, well I get it again, whoops, I was still holding the key down. You can basically get the horizontal or the vertical loop, and this goes to here, but the horizontal loop goes, I'll get it, I'll get it, there it goes to there. But you see how it converges to this point, it can't, didn't even know how to pick up that last point. And that can be a little tricky, so that's one way to get the loop, in fact that's how I did create the animation, is by selecting a loop, we'll, uh, whoops, I'm picking the wrong thing, so we'll do that first. I'll go grab one of these like this. And since I have it selected all the way around, then I'm going to press P to separate the selection. All right, and then I'm going to come up here and I'm going to do the same thing with this one. Hold down the Alt key, press P, separate it, separate it. So I'll just do those three by themselves, and then I'll exit here. And you'll notice now I have individual objects. That one's sphere.17, that's 18, that's 19 that's 20 so I basically just created individual objects that I can just move out of here and then since I was able to move them out then I just set keyframes for each one this kind here a location keyframe and then maybe another time later I moved them back into the scene like that and set another locate set another location keyframe so then when I, when I play it back you can see that sphere moves out that slice of the sphere moves out. Alright, well that's relatively easy, but now let's continue looking at the value of using a cube in the scene. And you go, well, a cube, that doesn't, that's not a sphere, right? Okay. Well, okay, it's not. However, if you go up here to the modifiers and you add a multi-resolution modifier, and we're going to subdivide it like three times. Oh, we will, yes. And then we have to apply it like that. So it's approximating the look of a sphere. Let's zoom in on it. In fact, if you do enough, it's like, well, okay, from a distance, it almost looks like a sphere. Your eye would be fooled at a distance. What it's like, in fact, uh, let's see if we can just let's subdivide it some more, just because. Let's see what happens. Okay, well, it's not quite a sphere, but it does have other advantages, because typically you're not just building a sphere within your scene. This is for models in general, if I don't apply that like that and close it, it's just going to re revert back to this. But when I do go into here, now I can have other options as far as selecting this edge loop or this face loop that goes all the way around this direction and goes all the way around, get it, that direction as well. So, and then the changes right in here, you notice there's this convergence down to this single point like this, all the others are sharing boundaries of four, but that shares three. But still, nonetheless, if I grab that, it still allows me to create a loop around here easy enough. Or grab that one around that way. So it's a, it gives you a lot more flexibility for building 
uh, more intri intricate objects. So uh, that's just something to keep in mind. All right. Well, so between those two and that animation, well, okay, that's it for this lesson. All right, and I'll see you in the next lesson.